Hey, wouldn't you know it, the day after I record the voiceover and begin editing the Bunsen Labs video, they decide to release a new version. And of course, there are big changes between the versions, so I can't just splice footage between the two versions, and so here we are. Someone during last week's livestream mentioned something about a distro delve speedrun, and since I literally recorded episode 43 yesterday, we're going to be doing that speedrun thing right here and now. So, let's go! The installer is still the weird Debian installer with the same quirks, but this time I couldn't install Bunsen Labs at all, it just kept failing while trying to set up the bootloader. I had to drop into a live session and completely wipe the drive and set the partition table to MS-DOS for it to work. So that sucked. The welcome app is back and it looks as good as ever with the new Bunsen Labs Lithium styling. It seems pretty much the same as before without any real major changes. There were some new options, but nothing big. The Bunsen Labs Lithium has gained a little weight with this release with a fresh updated install coming in at 3.9 gigabytes and the desktop here is using about 529 megabytes of memory. In NeoFetch, we can see that this is Bunsen Labs 10.5 Lithium based on Debian Buster with kernel version 4.19 and a more recent version of Bash version 5.0.3. It's the same XFCE open box Frankenstein with custom styling, it's Tent 2, and the little mouse cursor menu thing is called the Debian menu or menu XDG. Now save for the updated styling, not much has changed in the way of applications and things. The application menu still has the curated apps as well as the utility helpers for installing your printer and stuff like that. It supposedly installed support for Bluetooth, but I didn't see any applets for it. And without applets, you can still connect to the Bluetooth CLI thing for your devices, but I mean, who wants to do that for desktop Linux distro? And something about the canned themes changed, because the desktop wouldn't update when I switched them. There's a menu option for reloading GTK, but it didn't do anything, so if you want to change the look and feel of Bunsen Labs, I guess you'll need to restart it. And while I was speedrunning, I must have clicked a bad option somewhere because it killed the original Conky and put the panel on the top like it was with Helium. Honestly, I don't know what the hell I clicked to do that, it just kind of happened. Very odd. And the Samba stuff seemed to regress. The stream top is no longer showing, and in fact, none of my Windows computers on the network are showing at all. The shares that do show up are Linux Samba shares, so something definitely changed about this Samba config. What a pity, because it worked on Helium just fine, so... The external media stuff was the exact same. No EXFAT support, but full archive support, and all of the media formats played back without any issues at all. Still no Flatpak or Snap support, and the Etcher app image did that weird Debian thing where it refused to open. The other one worked just fine though. So we're all ready to the gaming segment, and let me tell you, it was a mess. Here in the footage, I'm still using the AMD card, and Golf With Your Friends ran great. I even got Mango HUD to work this time. Look at it go at the top corner of the screen. Redye worked too, no issues at all, but apparently I got lucky with these two games because nothing else worked at all. XCOM 2? Nope. Deus Ex? Nope. Not even crash logs or anything, they just wouldn't launch. I double checked that I had all of the correct Mesa stuff installed and verified with GLX info that my graphics stuff was set up right, which it was. So I tried out the Nvidia card again and this time I was able to install the Nvidia driver successfully. It's version 430, so that's good. But did that make it better? No. Void Bastards launched, but it was completely unplayable. The game has this really cool comic book graphics aesthetic, it's, it's just awesome. And the graphics requirements are a little steep, but that does not excuse the performance here. This is like 4 frames a second maybe. It runs at 60 frames a second on my workstations. This is unacceptable. And guess what? Still running the Nvidia card here. No Deus Ex, no XCOM, no GTA 5. Something is clearly wrong with the graphics setup on Bunsen Labs. So I'm just going to play some Freedom Planet over the outro here because that's the only other installed game that I could get running at all. So I wrote this episode as a speedrun, assuming that Bunsen Labs Lithium would be just as great as Helium was, but oh, it's not. Honestly, I'm a little stunned at the number of regressions I ran into, and I get this is a brand new release and everything, but damn, does nobody in the Bunsen Labs community play games at all? I tried two completely different graphics cards and they both had similar issues, so I'm just going to keep this one short and sweet. Bunsen Labs Helium was awesome. Bunsen Labs Lithium is buggy. 
If you're interested in trying it out, give them a few months to iron out the regressions. I mean, honestly, this feels more like a release candidate than a stable release, but if you don't mind being a guinea pig, by all means, dive right on in.